for third major town hall. I'm here with founder Matt. And to introduce myself briefly, I'm Angela and I'm a leading community member at Major Dow. Welcome, Matt. Hi, what's up, Angela? Hi, everybody. Excited to keep doing this. Uh, hopefully we can start doing it live soon. That's that's the goal. Um, but anyway, it's good to just be here, talk to you, Angela, and um, tell everybody what we're doing, what we're building, what's up, and uh, so everybody gets to know us and, and whatever. Yeah, uh, so just to briefly um, introduce you guys uh, to what we're going to talk about, we will start where we stopped last time in uh, town hall number two, when we mentioned briefly uh, major governance, uh, major DAO governance and dashboard that's uh, planning to be live uh, very soon, right Matt? Yeah, definitely. And we will talk more in depth of what is DAO, what, what is the benefits and what exactly is Major Dow doing as a media community? So why wouldn't we start uh, with Major Dashboard? All right, yeah. So the Major Dashboard is uh, something we've been working on for a while. And uh, just to give everybody a recap, we have um, our current live product, which is a YouTube browser extension that connects your wallet to YouTube and Twitter and allows viewers to curate uh, videos personalize their video feeds and um, really elevates the viewer to uh, a curator um, so they can add value into the uh, video ecosystem curate high quality content but also earn ETH on a weekly basis so I think we've rewarded I think seven thousand dollars worth of ETH uh, to our top curators who also are members and um, this application serves as a great on-ramp for people to be introduced to Major and Major DAO, um, the membership and some of the benefits uh, of why it is great to be a member of this larger video community that we're building. And, um, and so the browser extension is live in the Chrome Web Store. All you have to do is search Major and uh, you can download it and just using your wallet. So it's super private. But the dashboard is something that uh, has been in the works for a long time and we're really focused on making the user experience really clean and it's bringing uh, all the information that's coming from the browser extension into the dashboard tied with treasury controls, tied with uh, governance and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about our governance but um, yes, so that, that's, that's rolling out uh, this month and we're just sort of fixing the last minute uh, last minute, like back end stuff right now. Yeah, I'm really excited uh, to see Dashboard being live and actually use it. I know uh, a lot of community members uh, are looking forward to it also. Uh, one of the interesting features uh, on our dashboard is leaderboard. You can actually see uh, your ranking status, uh, which is very exciting for a lot of people that I talk uh, in our Discord. So. Any, any feedback uh, around that? Yeah, some of the features uh, will be the curator leaderboards, the creator leaderboards, the uh, video leaderboards. We'll be able to break all the different uh, in, like members, so the curators and the creators and the actual videos broken out by content category, which is used through our tagging system. And so it'll be a great way to find the content that you want, want to be focused on. It's a great learning tool and it's also a great way to follow other uh, curators. And so once again, we're elevating the viewer to a curator and we're creating a social following around sort of uh, these experts, if you will. Um, and then other features will include uh, treasury. So you'll be able to see the amount of ETH that's in the treasury. You'll be able to uh, allocate uh, or vote on how the treasury is managed and the other assets that we want to have in the treasury. Um, and then uh, you'll be able to see all the data um, that's coming from the extension that, and the people that have memberships and the type of memberships that they have. And so it's a really great data uh, tool. Um, and then I, the governance is uh, something that is we, we're taking a very different approach to governance. And in the last episode, I, 
I mentioned how governance, for the lack of better words, is a shit show. And I think overall community engagement and um, the way that the uh, community can scale needs to focus on a better user experience for governance that also makes it more inclusive. Um, so you're not feeling overwhelmed by scrolling through lots of threads, trying to figure out what's going on. And so, uh, I want to save, I want to go into that in more detail in a second. And then, you know, the dashboard is really for us to build the home base and really own the brand experience and the user experience, um, uh, for our users and our members. Uh, right now, like a browser extension is just a simple, um, tool with a limited you know, surface area, it's got a lot of utility and it's a great way to engage with our members and get new members and drive revenue to viewers and creators. But like the dashboard is where we can really own everything and provide a lot more value uh, to our members and just, I'm excited to share it with everybody. The user experience yeah, is gonna be cool. Uh, I think the dashboard is gonna be a great place just to go and have a better picture of major DAO and, uh, as a whole, right? You will understand better uh, how to use major extension. You will extend, understand better how to be a part of uh, major DAO as a community, how to benefit and how to bring value to other people who, who are in the community. So definitely we're looking forward to uh, Dashboard getting live. Uh, but uh, I wanted to mention uh, next thing, which is governance. How governance works uh, with the major DAO app system? Yeah, so we are taking the approach of, of something called governance minimization. And that's really the idea that if, let's just say, the government was doing a really good job, people shouldn't necessarily be obsessed with the government, the politicians, and try to manipulate every little thing, right? And so we realize governance is important for our members, um, but we believe that if a project is doing a really good job, people are actually using the technology, using the applications and services, and, uh, versus worrying about governance. And so uh, what we've created is something called, uh, we call our governance the canon, and it is, uh, we use something called preset governance. And that simply means every single month there's preset decisions for the community to vote on that matter and help the project scale. Um, and some examples of that are um, around the core treasury assets. Hey, Angela, I'm getting some feedback from your computer if you just want to. From my computer? Yeah, if you just want to mute. Right. Okay. Now I can't hear you, but I was hearing myself come through. Um, right. So there's preset governance, which is monthly preset decisions. Uh, an example of that is like our core asset allocation, right? So every, every time somebody mints a major ID, 20% uh, of that ETH goes into the major Dow treasury. And as we scale, so does the treasure treasury. And, uh, now we can decide or the community can decide how they want to allocate that ETH. Should we move it into USDC? Should we buy some wrapped Bitcoin? Should we buy some other top tier tokens or should we leave it in ETH? And so that's a simple way for the community to engage. They know exactly what to do. Um, and the, these things are banded, which means that there's a, uh, there's a limited amount of flexibility within particular governance decisions. So it wouldn't be, let's allocate all of the ETH treasury to Solana or something like that, right? It's, it's to um, help the project stay focused. We're thinking long-term here, um, but it's, it allows for the individual community members with the most voting power, uh, which is determined by major IDs, um, to vote on how the project is moving forward. Another example is staking. So we're earning ETH into the treasury. ETH can be staked now that we've, we're post-merge. And so how much ETH should we stake? 
We stake, and when you stake the ETH, you get a yield, right? And so that's an important decision that scales that the community can make every single month. And then there's decisions like DAO distribution, right? How much should the DAO get versus the application's top users in terms of rewards? And uh, right now the percentage is 20%, but users could be able to move it up to 30%, but that throttles down the incentive mechanism for application users uh, to earn ETH on a weekly basis. So there's trade-offs, it's banded, um, but that's still an important decision that gives users control. And the whole idea is to keep introducing these preset monthly decisions and they've got big old buttons on them. And so they make it really easy uh, uh, for knowing how to use it and, um, and how to contribute. And so everybody can be involved and you don't necessarily need to be reading tons of different proposals, which could have been um, uh, proposed by a rogue actor, for example, which happens to a lot of DAOs. We still have a proposal methodology and there's still ways to add additional things and help influence the direction of the project and uh, the DAO. But, you know, it's it's there's there's the main focus is on these preset decisions and proposals should scale. And that's the biggest thing. And they need to be focused on the, the, the objective of Major DAO, which is to provide and capture more revenue for their video markets, uh, largest market participants, the viewers and the creators, right? Um, and so I tend to keep talking too long, but I wanted to get all this stuff out. So just jump in and cut me off whenever you want. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to say uh, when it comes to governance, uh, I think it will be very easy for a regular user who's not even familiar with maybe Web3 space, maybe he's just a video user, but it's made so simple that you can just go and, as you tell, big buttons and just click and select what they want to do. Uh, from my past experience in the, where I was a uh, part of previous uh, DAOs, it was very complicated, uh, even if I was into the crypto space. So I'm really looking forward to, to introducing our governance and dashboard to our community. I think it will be very, very beneficial and simple, which is the most important. <laughs> but I want to touch briefly for the people who are watching, who are viewers, curators, and part of media community, but are not that familiar with concept of DAO, what it is, like in very simple terms. Yeah, so DAO stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. And it's a popularized term that came out of the emergence of blockchain technology. And I'm not going to go through the entire history of different DAOs, but it's essentially uh, an online community represented and owned by token holders and or an online membership. And so we've taken this membership model and we've used the DAO um, and uh, to align economic incentives for all parties within the video community, right? And so that's something that's missing from the existing Web2 video ecosystem, right? Where uh, the viewers are no longer the customer or the client, they're the product, right? Where big platforms have essentially commoditized creativity in video, right? 97% of content creators make less than the poverty line and billions of viewers who are spending their time, attention, and efforts online make zero dollars. And so there's a dramatic shift that's possible and we believe that the best uh, approach um, by using you know, blockchain is through this membership model where you own a portion of the platform by being a member and that's, and that's important. No matter how much you wanna contribute economically, creatively, or like just technically, or just being involved with the community, as long as you're a member and you hold one of our major IDs, you have some economic incentive and reward from being a member. And I think that's important when you look at how these Web2 platforms operate, where it's the complete opposite, right? It's it's value extraction to shareholders, period. Yeah, that's definitely true. And most of the 
participant in video infrastructure and ecosystem are not even aware of it. They're like happy being on that platforms, but they're not aware that they're actually monetizing and using their time and attention to benefit. And they're prov providing everything for free. <laughs> and I think it's really time uh, to align incentives within the system. And one last question uh, for today is, who would you consider the part of media community? Who would I consider to be part of the video community? Obviously, the viewers and the content creators, they make up supply and demand, right? And they're the largest market participants. There's over 50 million content creators worldwide. If you look at uh, what kids want to be when they grow older and do for a career, it's become like a YouTuber, right? So video is ingrained and increasingly becoming uh, interwoven throughout our society, even at a very adolescent age and now, but it's also part of everybody's business model, right? Content is king. That's the way we communicate ideas. That's the way we connect with others. That's the way business is used. They all have a video strategy nowadays, whether it's advertising, whether it's connecting over Zoom, whether it's um, buying and licensing content, right? Video is just a massive and rapidly growing market and there's so much room for improvement. So I would just say, uh, and this is why, uh, you know, I founded Major and this is why we, we are building this community and this membership because the opportunity for video to also help onboard so many users into the digital asset ecosystem, get exposure to digital assets, but also use video to learn, right? It's, it's the main way we express ourselves creatively and it's a lot of the way we learn about new uh, subject matter to improve our, our regular daily lives. And so, but everybody uh, on the planet, not yet, but as you know, more people go mobile and people have access to the internet, video is going to be everywhere. And, and so that's, that's why I'm really excited because the mat, the opportunity is so massive and you just need to scratch the surface on some of these markets in order to make a big difference and then also create new experiences with video for all those individual members um, rather than just, let's just say, watching video and getting ads shoved in your face, right? And so uh, I think there's ways for cross-community engagement, ways to finance new content, and uh, ways to, um, for example, create new roles and jobs uh, within this video ecosystem that currently doesn't exist uh, in order to provide more value into the ecosystem rather than this passive viewing experience, right? Yes. Yes, yeah, so the video community is massive. My mother was actually asking questions about major, major now, and she was like, so who, who is that made for? And I was like, are you watching videos? Like, do you use YouTube? She was like, yes. And I was like, that's that. That's perfect. You're in... Is my younger brother watching YouTube videos? Is he using desktop version platforms, uh, all video, like for entertainment, education, communication? She was like, yes, and this is for him. So it's very simple and very obvious, not just for me, but I think for many people. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I used to say this all the time in meetings uh, back when I was you know, working at in my web two job, you know, and I was, and I was slinging video all over New York city. It was, uh, you know, the days are gone when your dad doesn't know how to work YouTube. Right. Or like, you know, or where you're, where they're only watching, uh, let's just say NFL network. Now, when I come home, my dad's got YouTube streaming over the top and onto his big screen and he's watching, you know, still, you know, stealer clips online, but he's, but he's watching them on YouTube, right? And so if you look at the demographics and the people who use video, it scales across all ages. The average person watches about nine videos per day. And, um, you know, about there's 500 hours of video being uploaded every single minute to platforms like just YouTube. And there's 3 billion monthly active users on YouTube alone. And that's just one platform, which is the number one uh, video destination, and it's the number two search destination 
uh, on the planet. And so like, there's so much room for improvement. And I think there's a way to uh, create really, really interesting ways to uh, make video more valuable and to different types of users, whether you're a creator, viewer, um, a curator, uh, or a student or so, an entrepreneur or somebody that wants to or uses video as a way to improve their daily lives. And that's, and that's what crypto is all about, right? It's about, you know, coordination at scale and it's about um, leveraging different assets to not only improve your life financially and protect yourself from whatever's happening in the macro ecosystem, in the macro uh, financial environment, um, but also to own your time and attention and your assets. Yes, definitely. Uh, I think that's good for today, Matt. Uh, I think this was great. Uh, I enjoyed it. I hope you had fun too. Uh, I just want to say uh, for everyone who's watching this uh, and it's not uh, part of our Discord, uh, join Major DAO. Uh, we have a a lot of discussions, we get like a feedback from community, we would like to connect there with you also. And of course, you can check our website, extension, and so on. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Angela, for doing this as always. And thank you very much to our growing community. Uh, much love uh, to all the major DAO users and members. And um, excited for November, we should be rolling out a lot of new stuff. Um, new product updates and um, uh, things are rolling and especially during these crazy crazy times right like it's it's good to be building and so um, yeah so look out for all the stuff coming down the pipe yes thank you Matt and see you guys next time thanks Bye. everybody thanks Angela <laughs>